Hey everybody, Kevin Anson here with TheVideoCourse.com. In this lesson, I want to talk to you about creating a proposal for your video projects, and more importantly, how easy this is to do. This particular proposal is one I sent out for a project I was bidding on for Nike. Obviously, I removed all the proprietary information, but you can see that a simple proposal like this one is really all you need sometimes. I actually use this exact same proposal layout when I bid on a project for the Costco Auto Program and they ended up choosing me. That was an exciting day, <laughs> let me tell you. And also, if you just want to download this proposal project file, the link for that is in the description below. In that download folder, you'll find three versions of the proposal and three PDFs of those versions. I'm giving you the PDFs just in case you want to recreate them in some other program other than Adobe InDesign. And towards the end of this lesson, I'll share with you a secret that I've learned that a lot of video professionals aren't aware of when it comes to sending out proposals. All right, let's get started. So I like to use Adobe InDesign to create my proposals. I've been using the same template for a few years now, and it always seems to meet my needs. It's clean looking, professional, and it's really easy to manipulate. There are obviously countless other programs to do this in, but this is how I do it. Now I'll point out though that I don't always send a fancy proposal like this to every single project I'm bidding on. Sometimes I'll send a simple email like this one here if it's a client I've worked with before or if I feel like a simple email estimate will suffice. It really all depends on the situation. But if I'm working with a bigger client like Nike in this case, I feel like they deserve to have the red carpet rolled out so to speak. It's just one way to make your proposal stand out just in case you're going up against other bids. All right, so if you've ever used Photoshop or Illustrator, InDesign behaves pretty similar in how all the tools work. I'm not gonna go into great detail on the interface of InDesign. This is just about proposals, but if you wanna learn more about InDesign, I'd highly recommend getting to know it. People use it for all sorts of things like books, magazines, brochures, flyers, posters, and uh, even content for tablets apparently, all sorts of stuff. All right, so at the top of the proposal here, we have our logo. This is where I like to put the name of the company that we're gonna be working with. And in the first box here, we have the name of the contact person I'm working with, so her name and her title. This is the name of the company she's with and their address. Just gives it more of a professional touch. And we have the name of the project we're working on. Here we have the description, which I usually like to describe in a couple short sentences. It's basically just telling them the services we're gonna be providing to them. Sometimes you might need to go into more depth depending on the client. Some people will send you an RFP that details out exactly what they want from you. In that case, you might need to outline a lot more things in this particular box here. These are the deliverables. In this case, the client wants 100 DVDs, and then they also want the digital files emailed to them, which I will probably just create a QuickTime file and Dropbox those to the client. In this particular case, we have three pricing options for them. They wanted a low, a medium, and a high. The first option is just myself coming out with my camera, my lighting package, and my sound package, and editing the project as well. The second option adds an extra camera person, and the third option adds a lighting guy. So if I wanted to change this, I would just double click in here and type in my text, and hit escape to leave the box. Also, if you are inside the box, you just hit tab to tab over to the next column. Hit tab again, it'll go down to the next row. This particular proposal does not function like Excel in that it would automatically add up this column and put the number here. You actually have to manually add up these two numbers and put the number here. So I usually take out my trusty calculator, add up the numbers. One thing I will recommend is to make sure you add up these numbers a couple times to ensure that you get the number correctly. I ran into a situation where I put an incorrect number here and the client held me to it. So make sure that you add up these numbers correctly. And the last element about this proposal is the footer here. I usually like to put my website and my phone number as well as my contact email. You can also put your personal email there if you'd like. And now moving on to the secret that I told you I was gonna tell you about. That is the secret of making your numbers not round numbers. When I first started out, 
I would put in a number like 800. And so this came out to 1600. So what happened was the client started asking questions like, well, I see that you're putting in a round number, so you must be able to negotiate this number down because they were thinking that I'm just padding the numbers and making up a number for my own benefit. But when you create a number that is not a round number, they assume that is just how much your services cost. So as far as they're concerned, you're including things like insurance or gas or meals or equipment rentals, things like that. I would say 1485 sounds a lot better than 1500 because this number would then become $3,000. So they're thinking in their head, wow, um, he must just be making up numbers here, so I'm sure that we can bring him down on this. But if you come up with a random number like this, they will just assume this is how much your services cost. Plus, if you normally charge $600 for a day of shooting, and now you decide to make it 635, so that number over here now becomes 12, 70, well guess what? Now you have an extra $70 that you didn't have before and now you can take your significant other for a nice dinner. <laughs> Nine times out of 10, the clients will pay it and they won't ask any questions. And once you're happy with your proposal, just go to File, Export. I set this to Adobe PDF. It's usually the best way to send someone an attachment and hit Save. And this little box will pop up. I usually don't change anything. There's not really any need to. Hit OK. And you are done. All right, that's it for this lesson on proposals. Make sure to click the link in the description to get a copy of your free proposal project file. Also, make sure to give us a thumbs up if you like this video. And please, please subscribe. Feel free to leave your feedback and questions in the comments below. If you have any suggestions on how to do these things faster, I know my way isn't the only way I'm still learning, please do so in the comments below. Also head on over to thevideocourse.com for even more free lessons, and we'll see you next time.